You in frame there, Keith? You get your recording? Yes. You're ready to go. Okay. The high tech Keith is getting this down. I've got a confession. How many of you think of me as the oddball inventor always coming up with new ideas? <laughs> All right. Well, the confession is the last four years, I come from 30 years of designing perfection computer systems. The last four years, what I've actually been doing is I'm a human re-engineering psychoanalysis student. Let me explain. I'm so enamored with human nature because I was so isolated for so many years that now I purposely put myself into situations that are maybe risky, maybe unusual, because I'm so enamored by human nature. What makes people tick? Why do we think the way we think? What can I do primarily to fix myself first? Because most of the things I've developed in the last couple of years have been because of personal needs that I have. And because I'm a prolific, out-of-focus inventor, I'm constantly thinking of new things, and I have a very difficult time, a confession here, of settling down and doing one and only one thing. How many of you have heard the thing, an inch wide and a mile deep? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a mile wide <laughs> and two inches deep. <laughs> oh, I'm good. so enamored with human nature that I can develop products, and I'm a prolific writer, and I do so many different things, and people keep saying, who are you? And I'm saying, I don't know. I'm finding out who I am, and I don't mean to treat you as guinea pigs, because I'm probably the biggest guinea pig of all. I want to be the dumbest guy in the room, and I've shared that with a couple of you before, is if I'm the dumbest guy in the room, and the guy, the people say, well, yeah, you are, because you just admitted it. Mm -hmm. How much more can I learn from surrounding myself by the smartest people in the room? Who's going to learn the most? And if I can use this technology and the methodology that I develop so that the dumbest person like me, and maybe you feel you're dumb too, can get in front of an audience and speak directly to people's hearts and ask them, What's going on in your lives? How can we work together? Where I'm not going to be here to solve your problems or your issues. That's not my role as a consultant. My job is to trigger you in such a way that maybe together or with other help and resources that you can figure out how to, quote, fix yourself. So for four years, I've developed methodology that hardly anybody's seen that I'm starting to roll out now. And I'm only rolling out things that I find of value to people, like getting teenagers to start their own businesses so they're financially independent by age 16. Novel idea. Helping people mind map so they get their thoughts on paper. And I'll confess that if I had nothing else better to do all day long, I would literally write six to eight hours a day. I don't read hardly anything anymore because I've got so many stories. I can go out into an airport. I can go out to the MARTA station. I can put myself in a weird situation like who knows where and listen to people's needs and grab so much information. I can't wait to get back to the computer to write about it. How valuable could that be to take your feelings and your thoughts put them on paper, to lock them down, and to be a benefit first off to yourself, and second, to your audience. Thank you, Keith. Mm -hmm. I have gotten to see you speak before, and I am quite happy with the performance that you just did. And what I say by that is I think this performance that you just did was just real. It was very authentic. And
and some of the ways technically that this came across to me as authentic was your pauses. Many times you would have a phrase and you'd sit there for a minute, not thinking of the next words exactly, but sort of pondering the phrase that you just gave. That is a powerful way to connect with an audience. So one particular thing that I think you did very well here was using pauses. Whether you needed them or not, I don't know. But using the pause to allow your audience to sort of catch up with you really helped. I thought as well that your volume was very good and that your gestures seemed very real. I would love to talk to you later offline about the actual content that you shared. But I'll say this, that uh, a Baylor study recently connected uh, humility and honesty with the improved job performance. It was a study. And I would say, if nothing else, you came across to me as very humble and very honest. And these are very powerful things from the platform. So good job. Thank you, Keith. Uh, Keith, I, I enjoyed the talk. And, and I believe in a lot of things that you say about you. I would offer, let's say, two things. For being ADD, all right, it's very difficult to be disciplined in certain areas. And I would recommend you to challenge yourself to look at your sentence structure and your choreography. In other words, if you practice certain movements on things you're going to say, they will flow more naturally than what I saw there. You talk with your hands all the time. And that then eliminates some really pungent points that you can make with what you're saying. So if you look at uh, when you started out with the human re-engineer psychoanalysis, you went through that fairly quickly where I wasn't sure that I had all the words, mm -hmm. yeah. and you were moving all the time. If, some, if that's a key piece and you want to bring people in and add humor to what you say also, that's a place to do it. But you have to practice that statement, and then you have to try it 15, 20 different ways to come with the way that flows the best for the audience you're in front of. So that's the one area I would ask you to uh, look at and think about. Thank you. Great job, Keith. I, uh, I enjoyed it. I, I, felt like, um, I felt like you were trying out some new stuff, right? You were like... You, all new. Yeah, you, like, you're just kind of seeing where this goes. It's not a polished piece, and that's great. That's what this is all about, just throwing it out there. I think as you... Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to kind of blend a little bit about the content and the, and the, and the presentation. As you begin to focus this, um, I think maybe it is about uh, self-discovery. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you share a lot about your limitations and your, uh, your challenges and, and these types of things. And I just want to caution you there because that does make you very humble and it makes you very um, uh, authentic. And, and connectable, but I think there's a point at which self-deprecation works against your credibility. Uh, because there's a point at which people in the audience are saying, why are we, why are we listening to this guy? that dumb, yeah. why are yeah. we listening to this guy? When you're sitting there literally calling yourself dumb, yeah. Yeah. that to me was uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, again, watching yourself on tape, and I know I have a ton of energy when I present, and if you look, look at those earlier tapes, it's just unfocused. It's all over there. It's weird gestures, uh, you know. And, and if you watch it yourself uh, a time or two, you'll, you'll find, and I want you to be aware of this, you have a, a habit with your tongue of, of, of doing this tongue waggle thing where it either goes back and forth or it just goes, uh, uh, yeah. We don't, we don't care if you have dry mouth, but when we see your tongue waggling, waggling around, it's, it is a distraction. Uh, so just, you, I, I, I would find a different way to... To manage that kind of energy, um, along with what Jim said, when you introduce these these thoughts, which obviously are stuff you really thought about and really written about, these abstract thoughts, like that first long title, I think there is an opportunity for humor. I think that you know maybe what you do is you take that th those words. And I don't even know what they are because they went by so quickly. Yeah. And like Jim, I was trying to keep up with it, yeah. and you you form that into an acronym, which makes no sense, right? And, and then you, you say, basically, what it means is I love human nature. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, the acronym's not important. And we need to know it's not important, because otherwise we're trying to keep up with you, and, and, uh, and we can't. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, so, so ultimately, I felt like you were coming into the point of it all, which is uh, the study of human nature, the tool of introspection, Mm -hmm. And that you have to build that dialogue with